So now we know what was said during the heated post-debate exchange between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national no. TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion, we'll have that discussion. You called me, you told me. All right, let's not do it I'm now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle, I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. Supporters are going pretty crazy on the internet, but national progressive groups are calling for party unity. Today, 18 organizations representing millions of progressive activists joined forces to release a statement, a progressive unity statement on the Democratic presidential primary. Signers included the Sunrise Movement, Justice Democrats, and the Working Families Party. And they all want Democrats to focus up on enemy number one, Donald Trump. But today, we wanted to focus up on what's going on on impeachment. To add one more nugget of news to this impeachment dumpster fire, a new U.S. government accountability report finds that the White House Budget Office violated the law when it froze U.S. military aid to Ukraine. But today in our show, Lev Parnas is pulling a Gordon Sunland move, and he says everybody was in on what went down with Ukraine. The Senate impeachment trial begins. Here's what to watch for. I'm Jamal Simmons. Here's why you should care. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. That was one of the claims made by Soviet-born businessman and self-proclaimed Trump supporter Lev Parnas in a round of interviews yesterday. These interviews dropped like a bombshell in the impeachment saga focused on President Trump withholding military aid from Ukraine for campaign opposition research help. Parnas revealed President Trump lied when he said there was no quid pro quo. The first quid pro quo we gave was when we met with President Poroshenko. Uh, that was uh, former president. For, for, former president Poroshenko. Man. So, what was your message to Poroshenko? Well, Poroshenko is that if he would uh, make the announcement that he would, they would, he would get uh, Trump would uh, either invite him to the White House or make a statement for him, but basically would start supporting him for uh, you know president. So Zelensky ended up winning the election, and Parnas said this was the second instance of quid pro quo. I basically told him very strict and very stern that uh, several things. A, that uh, he needed to make an announcement, Zelensky needed to immediately make an announcement literally that night to, or tomorrow, that within the next 24 hours that they were opening up an investigation on Biden. Democrats also possess a series of documents showing communication between Parnas and Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. Trump, the White House, and their allies have vehemently denied withholding military aid in exchange for damaging information about the Bidens. But Parnas, he has receipts that include photos. I thought they were going to shut me up, make me look like the scapegoat, and try to blame me for stuff that I wasn't done, but with God's help and the great legal team that I have besides me, we were able to get the information out, and now it's out there. So I welcome him to say that even more. Every time he says that, I'll show him another picture. It should be noted, Parnas was indicted in October for running a scheme to buy political influence in the United States, so expect his credibility to be an issue. The White House, they've released a statement today saying this is Parnas' attempt to score a get-out-of-jail-free card. While all of the new developments regarding Ukraine are breaking, senators are on the verge of kicking off President Trump's impeachment trial. Yesterday, the House of Representatives voted to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate, and today, Chief Justice Roberts and senators were sworn in. It's only the third time in history that something this serious has happened on Capitol Hill. Here are some things we can expect in President Trump's impeachment trial. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will likely be a roadblock. According to a Hill report, McConnell plans to make the trial as painful as possible so everyone will want to just get through with it. Trial guidelines maintain senators will not be able to bring electronic devices on the floor or read materials unless it's about impeachment. Also, senators will not be allowed to speak to others while on the floor. Kind of sounds like high school detention. And what about the ability for senators to call new witnesses? Democrats reportedly want to hear from acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, former National Security Advisor John Bolton, and maybe now Lev Parnas or someone from the Government Accountability Office. According to The Hill, Republican senators will introduce a resolution that would further delay the decision until after opening arguments, and Democrats will need some Republican swing votes to make that happen. So how long will this trial last? Everybody wants to know. The Hill reports that some senators are expecting the trial to last past the State of the Union address and Iowa caucuses in February. That means that Democratic hopefuls Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and Michael Bennett will be grounded in the Senate during a vital time of the presidential campaign.
The only decision more important for Congress than impeachment is war. The American people choose a president through the Electoral College, and that person's supposed to serve for four years. To change the decision of the American people midstream is a huge move. I know that partisanship matters. When Bill Clinton was up for impeachment, I wrote about keeping him in office despite his offenses. But I also called out the president for his inappropriate relationship and lying under oath. I called for censure, not removal. The addition of Lev Parnas' information this week is another brick in the foundation of the impeachment accusations. The president used his official office to coerce a foreign government to help his political, personal campaign. At minimum, the Republicans in the Senate face the choice of hearing all the evidence and calling witnesses. The Constitution demands they treat this seriously. The men and women who fought wars to defend this country put real blood and flesh on the line. Risking one's political career to respect and honor the Constitution is the least we can demand of our public officials. We'll see if the Republican senators have the courage to hear the evidence, accept the truth, and judge the president accordingly. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.